Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Fridays video. So this is pretty much where I do um, stuff I want to do. So today we're going to be working on an in-app purchase shop. Now I know I said I was going to make an in-app purchase shop um, bigger video, so a game theory video with the actual theory and then the implementation. But since the request for this one has been so high and, you know, instead of just replying to multiple people at the same time and just repeating myself, I am going to be using this Friday video to just show you guys how I implement an in-app purchase shop. Now um, notice that this is the first time for me to actually do this, but I've read on the topic and um, it's, it's actually fairly easy. So let me show you how we actually go about this, let me show you the actual setup I have at the very moment. So right now I go into my game, I click here, I've got three buttons, one that says 50 gold, 800 gold and then remove ads. They're all tagged with a little price that I've put down there, and we are actually going to make this work today. The first thing we need to do is head over the window, services, and we need to enable that very service. Now if I just scroll that over here, um, you're going to have to sign in first, so you're going to have to log in with your Unity account, and then you're going to go down here, in-app purchase, and make sure that this is on. So I'm going to click on it. This little thing up here has to be toggled on like this. Now once it's on you now have to hit import and you are going to import the plugin inside of your project. So now your project should look like a real mess. Alright so the next thing we want to do is actually um, on the Google Play Developer Console. Now in order to actually access that we will need to have a uh, APK uploaded to the actual Google Play Store. Um, so, if you haven't ever uploaded a Google Play APK, or I mean an APK to Google Play, then you can go ahead and just search for the video I've made, the game mechanic video, where we just upload an APK, I think it's called something like uh, Publishing APK to Google Play. And um, in case you already have one on the Google Play Developer Console, then you don't really, don't really have to um, deal with that. But this application right here, the one I've got in front of me, is not on Google Play just yet, so I will quickly just publish it. So I'll go under Build Settings, Player Settings, and under Player Settings, I will add a key store. So my key store is already there, that's good. I will go under Other Settings, Set an Actual Bundle. So this is going to become N3K Flippy, and the version is going to be 0.1. This is the first code version, this is the very first iteration that we're going to have on Google Play. So everything sounds um, fine, just make sure the company name is good up here and also the product name. And there we go, so now I'm going to hit build. And I will build somewhere I can actually remember, so right in the same folder, why not. And we are going to head over to Google Play. Now over here on my Google Play developer console, it's, well first, you gotta be signing in first, so if you don't have a Google Play Developer Console, just sign in. It costs you 25 bucks USD, but it's a lifetime, so definitely worth it. This is what you need to actually publish on the Google Play Store. And um, yeah, so once you're signed in, you're gonna see your dashboard. If you have your application, just click on it and we'll come back to that in a moment. But if you don't, you're gonna have to hit add a new application and we will quickly fill in that information. So um, the title of my game is called Flippy. I'll upload an APK. And here it is, right here, my build.apk, the thing I just built inside of Unity right here. So I'll do upload your first APK to production, and I'll drag and drop this right in here. And if everything went fine, if I filled in all the information I needed to fill, this should be working without any problems. And that's pretty much all we need at the very moment. So let's actually have a look at this. Is it going to work? So we don't actually need to fill in more information. We don't need this to be available to everybody on the Google Play Store. We don't have to do this just yet. Right now we are in a draft phase and that's perfect for what we want to do. So what we need to do actually to have in-app purchase is go under here, in-app products. We click on it and it pretty much says your app doesn't have any in-app product yet. So we need to set up a Google Payment um, merchant account which is something I will do in a moment, but sometime it's going to say something else just above that. It's going to say something like you need to add the billing permission to your application. And if it says that, just make sure you have imported the um, services right here. Make sure you actually click on that button. That's only if you have the um, error I've just mentioned. 
But right now, my current blocking issue is that I don't have a merchant account, so I'll just go create one really quickly. And I've just finished setting up my merchant account, so here it is. Um, it says that my account is approved. I'm going to hit OK. And then we are going to go back on this page. So it says your app doesn't have any in-app products yet. So we are going to go ahead and just start implementing those. Alright, so let's have a look at what we have right here. So we have 50 gold, we have 100 gold, and we also have remove ads. Now, what they ask us over here is uh, what kind of product do we want to sell? Do we want to sell a subscription? So this is going to be charged every month, of course. Or do we want to sell a managed product? In our case, we have no subscription in that, so it's only managed product. So we're going to click on this. And then we need to put a ID. So I'll just say 50 gold for the first one. So it says, okay, so you got to start with a lowercase letters. So I'll just say gold 50 instead. And here we go. So we have some more information about that very product up here, as we can tell. And uh, let's actually just look at this. So this is going to be the title. We say 50 gold. Description is 50 gold uh, game currency or something of the sort. doesn't have to be that complicated and as for the price we just go down there 50 gold is and this is in my um, Canadian dollar I guess so I'll just say 299 for this guy okay so here it is that's the price and then we hit save and we have our first product so if we go back on this window we can say now that we have our first product it's called 50 gold it is a managed product and it is currently inactive so what I'll do is I'll add another product another managed product say this is a uh, this is gold a hundred and I'm pretty much just going to duplicate that really quickly and then finally no ads so I'm going to hit continue this is going to be the no ads in the game buying this item will remove ads in the game flippy and then the pricing we go down here we had a price we said that this was gonna be 199 so 199 in Canadian dollar and let's go ahead and just click on save so here we go we pretty much just created all our products that we need we only have three here of course we could have created a subscription but that's a little bit harder to test and um, we don't really need it so I think we have to activate them I'm not quite sure but I am actually going to activate them and like it says at the very top here they are going to be activated when the application is published so right now they're there and they're marked as ready so let's actually go back inside of unity this is where we actually start doing our coding part now the coding part is a little bit complicated but um, they actually have a really good example that I'm simply going to steal from as bad as it might seem um, I am going to go over here on this window this window is the unity IAP in your game. All I've did really is just go in Google and I typed Unity IAP and it's the first thing at the very top. So integrating Unity IAP in your game. And that's the exact same thing. So over here what it says, it pretty much just says how to set up your stuff. You need a project ID, you need all that kind of stuff. All you know, you went through this when you actually click on importing services. So if we just go a little bit below, there is code we can actually um, use, and it's down there. So all of this code is the actual first code window in here. So what we're going to do is hit copy code, and then head over to our game, and we're going to create some kind of manager. Now in my game, I already have some kind of manager. I already have like a, a script that purses through multiple scenes. So um, we could only be putting this scene I mean we could only be putting this script in a single scene like the menu scene in my case but uh, for some reason I like to actually have it everywhere so imagine that you're in the menu you can actually purchase something you're in the game you can also purchase that same exact thing so on my preloader I have um, something called a data data helper and this guy just purses through the scenes as you can tell it's over here in my preloader my first scene I load and then once the game is actually playing I'm now in my menu scene and it's still there. I'm in my game scene and it's still there. Now you don't need to do this. This might be a little bit too complicated for no reason. Of course you can just take this script and put it anywhere. Um, 
but I will just be putting it on my data helper. And now let's actually talk about that script. We are going to create a new component, call it, we could call it something like um, IAP manager. And IAP manager is going to be our paste from what we actually stole from them. So right now I need to close model develop because it's a little bit bugged. Let me just reopen it really quickly and just make sure that the paste works. Okay, so here it is. We are going to actually clean, well, not really clean, but just adapt this code for us. They're actually using a namespace. I'm not used to actually using namespace when I'm making games, so I'm going to delete that. Go at the very end. While I select everything, I'm gonna go at the very end and then hit Shift and Tab so I can indent towards the left like this and remove the last curly brace. And now we're going to slowly go through that code and uh, I mean quickly go through that code. We don't want to spend too much time here. Um, I'm going to be removing those comments. I am going to be removing everything that is Apple because I'm not using any iOS transaction here. That's good. I like to add private in front of that. Um, what else? That's fine. Okay, this is where most of the magic happens. Now, um, what I'm going to do is actually just remove the comments so we can actually have a good look at what is going on down there. And let me just explain to you what exactly is happening here. So let's just forget about all of these functions down there. They're pretty much just callbacks that you call whenever you're buying the product. So everything that you see in the initialize purchasing purchase I can't say that word everything you see in here is all the products that your game has so you create a new builder and the builder just builds your shop basically and then once you have that builder you add every single product like here in their example they have three different product and all of those product they have a different type as well now we've seen two of those type actually we we've seen three but um, it's it's not really explicit it's really hard to tell, but they have multiple product types. Let me just show you real quick. They have three of those. So the subscription, we know what it is. We don't have any um, product that is subscription based. When we've made our um, shop items on the Google Play developer console, we didn't create any sub subscription. We only create, I think it's called manageable product. I don't really, I don't really recall. But the manageable product actually splits into there is the consumable and the non-consumable. Now, the difference in between both of those is that the consumable, you can buy it over and over and over again without stop. So just think about the amount of gold we buy. You can go ahead and purchase a hundred gold. And then um, five minutes later, you can just purchase another 500 gold. I mean, hundred gold. And you can just do that over and over and over again. And that is a consumable product. You can consume it and just buy a new one. Now, as for the no ads, this is a non-consumable, consumable, and um, the reason it is, is because if you buy it once, you should not be able to buy it again, you don't need to, it's not really made for that, you just buy it once and then you don't have to buy anything else. It's also, uh, another good example would be a DLC, so you have your game and you actually have some kind of additional content to it. You could sell that additional content as a non-consumable product. And that is pretty much what we're going to be looking at. So um, I'm, I'm just looking at this really quick. This is Apple stuff. We don't need it. Um, in their example code, they have two product. And they call it consumable, non-consumable, and subscription. Now, ours is going to be a little bit different. And we're also going to change the way we type stuff. So we don't really, we're not going to be following their uh, naming convention. So, so let's just use a new one. I'll type in product. 50 gold or 50 gold like that and the static string is going to be the actual thing that I type, typed in in uh, the Google Play Store I think it was gold 50 and then same thing here that's gold a hundred we're gonna change this again and finally the last one was um, no ads so no ads and I think I was typing it this way. I'm not quite sure. Let's just double check in case I am um, I am wrong. So as you can tell here, gold 100, gold 50, and no ads. All of them seems to be right. And they're pretty much just matching here. 
Now, if we just go down a little bit here, it says Google Play Store specific product identifier for the subscription product. We don't have one, so we don't actually need this. And uh, I was talking about a subscription, so we don't have any subscription. We don't really need to have that. Um, initialize, that's good. Now we need to add our product. Here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna be taking every single string and that's the first parameter. And let's just make sure that the parameter makes sense. So it takes in an ID and also a product type. That's pretty much all we need. So product five, 50 gold and the product type is a consumable because you can buy it over and over again. Now on the second line, the second product we're gonna be adding is the product 100 gold, which is also a consumable. And finally, the last one is product no ads. And this one is a non-consumable because you only buy it once and then you don't have to do it again. And then we hit initialize. All right, so this is pretty much completed for these two functions. Is initialize is just going to check are you currently initialized, of course. So we just leave it here. And now this is where it changes a little bit. So the um, buy consumable and buy subscription, all of this, we don't really need, uh, we only need one of those. So we only need to have buy 50 gold. And then we just repeat that two more times. And that's buy 100 gold and that's buy no odds. And we replace this by the product ID. So this is product 50 gold, product a hundred gold and finally product uh, whoops no ads if I can make it okay here we go so this should actually be called from the uh, buttons that we have and uh, they're gonna be calling this function of course this one has to be doesn't have to be private but I just like to type it in here now what we call from these three function is actually the buy product ID and what goes on in here it's pretty much that you know this is what takes care of popping up the window and then the store controller does the rest of the job and we don't really have to worry about this so I'm simply going to close it up like this and the rest are purchase I think that's only for Apple um, yep over here it's only for Apple so again I'm sorry about you guys that use Apple device and that needs to implement that but I have no clue how to actually do it. Uh, let's move on to the uninitialize, what's in there? Okay, so it's just good, all right. Uninitialize file is another callback we don't need to take care of. Oh, proce process uh, purchase, this is where it gets interesting. So this is where we actually do what we have to do. So let's have a look. Um, what actually happens here is we have this if else statement and it's pretty much, you gotta be having it else if for every single product you have. And this is where you get your um, return. So if say you're buying something from the shop, inside of this argument thing, this is where you would actually know which item you just bought. And here they use a if else if to just check which item they've bought. So they do a string equal the product that you just brought and then they compare it to the actual um, string. So let's just assume that we've brought the 50 gold. We're gonna say product 50 gold. And this is going to actually say debug.log, let's try it out. Debug.log, you just brought 50 gold. Good times. Now let's move on to the next line. We're gonna say you just brought 800 gold good times and we got to make sure we change this of course and let's actually check for the next one and the next one will be product no ads and we're gonna say something among the line as you've just brought I mean you've just um, shut down every ads in the game forever I'll just type in no ads because I don't want to stay here for years and years to come and there's also something else down here, a L statement that says, um, you don't really know which product you've bought, but you've bought something. So we're gonna leave that L statement here. And I'm also going to remove the comments because they're annoying me a little bit. So there you have it. So you have those three else if, I mean, you have those three conditions and they pretty much 
they're the callback you're looking for for um, the very moment somebody brought something. So let's actually give this a try. Um, in order to try this, we are going to be calling it from the public function that we have a little bit um, higher. So the buy 50 gold, the buy 100 gold, these function. And they are in the IAP manager. Now, um, what I'm going to do is just create a private static. Uh, do we say that? Quit. <coughs> quit. Now, to make sure I actually call them from uh, quit. Now, like I said a little bit earlier, I'd like to be calling them from any scene. So I'll just create a static instance of it. And, and I just realized I'm going to rename this as well since it's not going to work if I just leave it like that. So this is the IAP manager and I'm going to create a private static IAP manager, oops, IAP manager that I'll call instance. And there we go. Now inside of a awake call, so private void awake, I will say instance is equal to this. Very well, now I should be able to access these function from pretty much anywhere. And I'm going to go here, see if everything compiles, that would be a good first step. And now um, I have a script that runs for these buttons, it's pretty much called the IAP model, so let me just go here, double click on it, and I already made some function um, inside of that very script. So pretty much this is what is linked to the buttons you see here. And what I'm going to say is IAP manager that instance, oops, not instantiate that instance. Did I not make this public? I made this private, that my bad. <laughs> so public static IAP manager. All right, so IAP manager dot instance dot buy 50 gold and same thing here, buy a hundred gold and buy no ads. Now the reason I do this here is because I can't take my buttons and um, I can't just take my buttons and link them directly to this because my button is inside of the menu scenes and it doesn't really know the data manager from here. All right, so everything should be working just fine. I'm going to hit play go inside of the game and then click on this. So it says, you've just bought 50 gold, good times. And I think that's pretty much it. We're gonna go with this one. That's working too, remove ads. And as you can tell, we're getting the callbacks that we've put inside of over here, this script, this function. So if you have to do any action, just like, you know, giving currency, um, in this case, giving 50 gold, I can go ahead and just find wherever my gold is in my code. I think this one has, it's inside of save state, I think, gold. Here it is. I am so good, I remember how I code. Um, and I just do a plus equal the amount of gold. And I'll just do that here as well. And as for the no ads, I have not implemented that just yet, but I will in the near future. Okay, so I'll be giving this a try really quickly as you can tell right here in my game, down there at the very left, it says 1. That's the amount of gold I have. If I watch an ad, it's going to be 2 and then so on. Now I'll go back to my shop and actually buy 50 gold. I click on this, it says um, purchase 50 gold. Good times. Now go under here, go back in my game and as you can tell, I now have that 50 gold. And that is pretty much it guys for the in-app purchase. Now I would really love to test this out on my actual device, but I really can't right now because this game is not published. And if it's not published then the um, in-app purchase thing, they don't really exist, they don't really work. So I wouldn't get the UI, I'd just get some error. And uh, this is why I need to finish my game first. As soon as I finish my game, I am going to deliver that video I'm talking about. So the game theory video, I mean the game mechanic video uh, with the whole theory part of this and how it works in the back end. Unfortunately right now this is all I can give to you, I can't give you the final example, but it pretty much works here and I'm pretty sure it would work also on the device. So guys, thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot for supporting me as you always do, it's great. Really love the amount of likes we get, the amount of comments, they're just increasing every day and it's just great. 
And uh, if you'd like to support me directly, you can of course pledge to Patreon. The links are all in the description below. And other than that, guys, I will be seeing you next time.